Hey, what's up guys? I'm super excited to show you what's behind me. Now this boat, there is a lot of mystique with this boat, often referred to as the unicorn. So we're gonna debunk some of these myths and find out is this truly the best center console sport fishing boat ever built. You're gonna find a lot of people that will make the statement that this is the best sport fishing boat under 30 foot ever built and they have a lot of good arguments but we're going to dive in and find out what makes this boat unique or maybe that's not the case but we're going to start in the transom here the very unique shroud a lot of people ask why do you have the shroud on the transom the reason being this is a true 27 foot boat there is no euro transom there's no bracket if you look at this the engine hangs right here. The shroud is what stops water from coming into the transom of the boat. It also acts as a noise barrier to reduce sound in the boat. And it's going to make a great fillet table and rigging station. <clears throat> 22 degree dead rise. Uh, that's going to give the boat an excellent ride. I mean, this boat is known for one of the best riding boats out there also one of the driest but not too deep when you get to those 24 degree dead rise uh, they tend to really rock so this boat should provide the perfect balance of a stable drift and a really good ride <clears throat> uh, let's jump in the boat i want to show you what's going on inside here real quick uh, we did the modern horn white really nice looking boat i don't like dark colored hulls never have uh that's a personal preference and a few other reasons why uh nice white rub rail really a big fan of that now when we get inside the boat obviously there is a massive massive amount of deck space in this boat very wide deck gunnel caps are nice and thin so it gives you a lot of room um another thing people are going to notice and depending on how much fishing you do, you may or may not understand this, but I'm gonna to explain to you. The gunnels in this boat are low. So one thing about the conch is it's the biggest center console I've ever seen that will still fish like you're in a smaller boat, meaning uh, you have the low gunnels. And that's really important to me. I don't like boats and it's really difficult to fish on a boat with real high gunnels. Reason being they interfere with your um when you're uh casting and retrieving let's say you're trying to work a lure and you have a really high gunnel it interferes with uh how you can fish your rod okay because you're forced to fish your rod up higher these low gunnels are meant to uh be able to fish around them very easily but the advantage to having the gunnels here versus the bay boat is i have something to lean against and keep me in the boat uh, and the real reason why we had these low gunnels is when we're landing fish it's easy to reach down and grab the water line so actually contrary to what people think real high gunnels that hit you up in the hips those are the ones you you have to be real careful of because when you bend over to reach the water line and say a wave hits the boat and that gunnel hits you right in the hips Anybody that's any, played any sports knows your hips control your body. You get your hips popped up, your feet come off the deck of the boat, that's how you fall on the water. It's actually a huge ben benefit to having smaller or uh, lower gunnels. And the really big reason too is for cast netting. You don't want high gunnels when you're throwing a cast net. It makes it extremely difficult. This boat is made to catch bait. Very wide deck space here the low gunnels makes it real easy to throw a cast at now up front naturally our gunnels are going to rise up a little bit really nice height up here i'm six foot tall and it hits me right in the bottom of my thigh um <clears throat> now looking up here we have a nice flat gunnel so we could jump up on here or for throwing our net uh, we have an anchor locker right here with a spot for the anchor really like that anchor tube in there uh 
we have two pitch wells right here. Now these pitch wells, uh, they're not plumbed. You just uh, take a bucket, fill them with water, plug them. But this just gives you something when you're moving and resetting your drift to keep your bait in there uh, and keep your bait alive. Now I got all the um, <clears throat> mats down right now because we're gonna start working on it. So I'm gonna have to show you the amount of storage. Uh, they really utilize the deck space really well. And uh, this boat is essentially a floating aquarium. What I mean by that is the live wells are massive. Uh, we have a 90 gallon stern live well and a 110 gallon bow live well. So this boat gives you more uh, live well access than any other boat I'm aware of. We're gonna take a quick look in the console and you're just gonna see this uh, massive console right here. Huge amount of space for our batteries. Another thing I really like, the lip right here on the console for our rod holders. We're gonna be putting six rod holders there. And I like the lip because it keeps the reels tucked in so you're not whacking them. You have plenty of room to walk around. Um, some boats get real narrow in here and it makes it hard to get, get around your console. Um, we went ahead and we put in a bird's all leaning post four rod holders two cup holders back here um thing another thing i like about the console is this helm pod right here uh, where our helm and wheel is going to go and also very wide console we're actually going to be mounting two 16 inch hummingbird apex screens these are massive screens really can't wait to get those in but uh that's all i have for you for right now i gotta get to work hardest part of the new boat is drilling the first hole we went ahead and drilled 12 holes for the rod holders six rod holders on each side of the console uh, the reason why i like all my rods on the console is that you want them to be out of the way when you're fishing and this is the best spot to keep your rod so we got a total of 12 on the console the lip is real nice here because this is going to allow plenty of space to walk around the console even with the rods there uh, and also everything drains into this lip there's a hole at the bottom of it so all the water will drain right out and never enters into your console all right guys so we got our rod holders installed show you the inside so they drain into this little lip area and everything drains out of there so you'll never get water into your console. Now, uh, this is the guide edition. So this boat is unrigged. There's no wiring and no plumbing at all. So take a look inside the console. This is it, totally empty. I mean, you can see, I could stand up inside this console and it's got a, goes way back, about seven feet back. Um, so I'm gonna get to work. I'm gonna start by running the engine cables um, and we're gonna pick out a place for our battery switch. Um, I got a box of uh, a lot of blue sea stuff, battery switch, ACR, fuses, um, bus bars. That's all gonna go in here. I do wanna keep my battery switch close to the door so I can open the door and just switch that real, uh, be able to reach it easily without having to climb in there. So uh, that's one thing I'm looking for. Um, and uh, we're gonna go ahead and get to work. Hey, what's up guys? I'm in the console right now, making my first run from the console to the stern for the uh, engine cables. And I just wanna show you something. So if you get a good boat, the more you work on it, the more you're gonna appreciate it. And anybody that's ever had to run wires in a boat knows how much of a struggle it can be on a lot of boats. I'm by myself right now, and think about this, we're up in the front chase right here. I was just able to slide the snake through here. You got all the hand, all, uh, all the room in the world for your hands. <clears throat> now, normally running a wire is always a two-man job, and on some boats, near impossible. This wire came out, I pushed it through, right there in the bilge. That's a beautiful thing. 
gonna be really, really easy and save me a ton of time wiring this boat when you make it that easy to pass stuff. And if you look here, real, I'll show you this in the compartments here. This is what I like, these big holes right here to pass through. Really nice. Two lead acid batteries. Uh, the starting battery on the left is the smaller. Uh, that's the um, group 24. And then we have a group uh, 29 uh, for the house battery. We're making our battery cables just mounted the uh, battery switch. I wanted the battery switch more accessible. So when I open this door, it's easy to turn on and off. So I mounted it up here. We use a little bit more cable. Now we're running uh, two gauge wire, um, two gauge wire for the cables, battery cables. Um, and we're gonna use a little bit more cable and I wanted to get that battery switch up here so it's accessible. Quick update, we have our battery switch in. We're running our uh, battery cables. This is a great product from Anchor Marine. It's a battery cable stripper. So we're using this uh, thick two gauge wire. This makes stripping a lot easier. Uh, my friend uh, Ben told me about the hydraulic crimpers to crimp uh, these big crimps. It makes it a lot easier doing it by hand on a big crimp like that's tough. And then we have our marine um, shrink tubing and uh, you can see the glue coming out of there. Um, so we're using all marine grade products and uh, we're starting to make some progress.